This is my Voron 2.4. It was built about two years ago. I've managed to keep myself from hacking on it pretty much to keep temperatures up and keep the ABS smell down. I did seal it off. And then we've got the fridge door front. Just some hacked together hinges, 3D printed. And then these were remixed from latches people had made to hold the side panels on. But I had to play with the hinges to get the spacing and everything. Right, because I got one millimeter gasket there, so there's not a lot of room for variation. But it closes flat against there, and it seals. What temperature it holds depends on what the weather is, what the temperature is in the basement. So this spring I had some trouble. It had trouble getting out of the mid-30s, and I had failed prints. So we're going to add some heat to it. This is the 110 volt, 500 watt PTC heater from my IDEX machine that I was using in there. Um, that didn't work as well as I wanted it to, um, but this heater seems to be a pretty good match for the 350 millimeter Voron enclosure. And then this GDS Time brushless DC fan, model GDB1232. 24 volt half amp it seems to be a good match for this heater I did some experiments with the uh, duct work I took out of the IDEX we did some experimentation and uh, seemed to keep part of this heater cool but originally using this I had it on there like that, more or less, with some duct tape and such. And the bottom of the heater got extremely hot. Um, enough to where the 125 degree fu uh, thermal fuse blew. So, after swapping back out for the uh, little thermal protection thing that resets... I discovered that you know all the airflow was going up to the top so I had to get into duct work and airflow dynamics and all kinds of stuff I hadn't planned on um, so my choices were pretty much make an elbow that's more rounded that's stuck away from the back of the thing or from the back of the enclosure or incorporate these turning vanes which redirect the airflow the thing about these they're not just curves they're kind of airplane wing shaped so I found a picture online of one from the side quote unquote ideal shape and uh, traced it saved it as an SVG imported it into Tinkercab and then spread it out to the length I needed so they should be the correct shape so as you can see air will come up through here we'll hit each one of those and then we'll get distributed and the fronts of them are a little longer which gets the air going straight so with the test version of this I tested and with that fan and this setup, the heater only got up to about 90 degrees. Hacking on this, I wanted to make sure the heater was always attached using metal. So, had some extrusions coming down, and I kind of placed it in here, attached to the extrusions. But it was a pain in the butt for the ductwork and everything to go around the extrusions. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm okay with it being mounted to the aluminum composite. Because it's still metal um, probably be a good idea to ground the aluminum composite on both sides in case uh, wire 
gets frayed or something on the edge if I can't find a grommet to fit. Height wise we still have clearance. Just. It'll stay to the left of the upright cable chain and then the cable chain for the X in front of it hopefully is far enough in front of it it won't be an issue but we won't be printing that tall that often so if we remember we can shut off the heat if we're printing that tall So if I had known, had my plan now that I had then, I wouldn't have hacked this off and I wouldn't have drilled that hole down there because the smart way to do it would be just to flip this over and then fill in that rectangle. And then you would basically have a blank sheet to work off of and drill my rectangle there for the heat to blow through. And then still put this down here, but this panel would be flipped upside down so it will be on the other side. So I'm going to flip this upside down and backwards and everything and mount it the way I wouldn't mount it had I done it right to begin with. So there's holes cut out. The duct hook will sit on the outside. Like that. This will go on from the inside, and then the wire will go through that hole, which I'm going to have to enlarge. So no part of the heater is actually inside the ductwork. There's no ABS plastic around it. And then this will be underneath the crossbar in the back, and there shouldn't be any plastic anywhere too close to it. And then I originally wanted the blower attached to the extrusion but uh, that way it would be the bottom edge would be all the way in the bottom of the printer but I think for the sake of simplicity we're going to keep everything on the aluminum composite so put this together pieced it together, figured out where this was going to be, tapped some holes down there, and that center cutout is a three inch hole saw, so that works out pretty good. And to cover up my previous iterations, we picked up some black duct tape, but we'll have to get new aluminum composite panels at some point. like when it's mounted at least this revision still got a little bit of a gap here when I build the final one and mount it I'll use silicone or some foam I'm going to put everything together and the final version of the ductwork will have cable cover integrated into it this here where I have it going in to the side of the cable chain and then passes through the loop on the anchor for the cable chain which was a horrible idea I shouldn't have done it that way because when I need to take the wires back out that's going to be a pain so I should have just brought this over further to the other side of the cable chain and just go in and straight down it only sticks out about 35 millimeters so this needed to go flat against a wall it would only be 35 millimeters away from the wall. So on the inside, I guess the next revision, those where the wires are coming through here, we'll move it over here so it doesn't pass through that loop because that's gonna I'm gonna regret doing that when it comes time to change something. Um, so yeah, the fans there. Originally I had the fan a little bit lower, but we'll see. How this works because this is more solid more easy and then some kind of cover could be made to come down and cover up these wires 
and then it would just bolt to there. So we got our printer config file updated to include the uh, heater and fan and stuff. And I had modified the LCD stuff to make the chamber temperature show up and it wouldn't let me update Clipper because of it. It said it was corrupted. So now all we've got is the chamber temperature showing up. I think that's what that is. So we'll do a fresh install after we get things working. So the first thing we're going to do We'll drop that and make sure our chamber fan kicks on. Oh yeah. It's loud and it throws a lot of air. Whether that's going to affect the printer or not, I won't know until it does. It doesn't. Now that we've verified the blower works as it's supposed to, uh, I hooked up the solid state relay that controls the uh, heater. I also hooked up this 1000 watt backup power supply that will beep at me and shut down if I pull more than 1000 watts, which we may very well between the heater and the bed. So now we will kick on the heated chamber and this temperature here. Probably isn't a good sign. We're already at pretty close to the load limits and the bed's not even on. So we'll have to do some measurements, see much how much power we're actually pulling. We don't want to go over 15 amp. We're getting pretty janky now. Uh, clamp meter's got to go just around one conductor, not both. So I've got this little extension thing in there. And Hopefully we're not pulling more than 15 amp, but we're going to see. Around 7 amp, 8 amp, 9 amp. That's close, but... So I think we're okay, but I might turn down the heater if it's not necessary. So I just kick those on. We'll see how long it takes the cham ch chamber temperature to get up to 50 or 60. Okay, we're about 10 minutes in. The heater chamber is reading 46. I snuck a little uh, probe there in the front. It's reading 54. The one that fluid is reading is snuck in there among the ch cable chains. So. This front corner that the air is being blown toward is pretty freaking hot. The frame is pretty hot there. As far as the top, it's not too bad, but you'd probably want to replace it with aluminum composite. Frame around the heater is not as hot. This is just warm. Probably the temperature of the air. The uh, Duct work. I debated about how thick to make the walls, so I made them thick with very low infill, hoping that would be some insulation. The back of the fan feels really warm, so I stuck a little thermistor on it. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's something to be concerned with. And then I forgot that I had bought all these. So I'm going to open it up and place those in. And the chamber heater is throwing off the bed heater. So clipper shut down. All these little thermometers reading kind of low compared to the meter. But there's not a huge variation in them. The distribution of the temperatures probably not horrible.
with this uh, temperature of the fins of the heater creeping up close to I think I put 120 as the limit so what I think I'm going to do is go back into the config file and back down the heater percentage of power until it no longer pisses off my uh, 1000 watt backup power supply we learned we could only turn the heater up to 30 percent with the 1000 watt backup supply I have but I'm not sure I would want it to go hotter because this piece of extrusion across the front is freaking almost too hot to touch actually it is too hot to touch the polycarbonate in the top is definitely going to sag in front of there so heaters probably too close to the top but that was where it had to be to clear everything else if it's going to be on the inside and if it were on the outside it would be surrounded by ABS which isn't good either uh, the chamber temp to 55 it's almost there but I've had the thing turned on and off and restarted it so I don't can't say how long it actually took to get up to 55 so a bit disappointed I do like the look of the blower in the back but it hasn't worked as well as I expected and because of that, I don't think it's ready for prime time. But whatever information someone can glean from this video, I hope it helps them out or saves them the trouble.